Well, hi there. Welcome to yet another episode of Family with Judy. Today we're going to talk about marriages. With me, I have Carol, and I have Judy Dongori, the family lawyer. W without further ado, Judy, how do we define marriages and what types of marriages are out there? Okay, so Kogi, I'll give you the legal definition of okay. marriage, mm -hmm. which is the voluntary union of a man and woman, which can be monogamous, and which can also be potentially polygamous. Mm -hmm. Then we have um, six types of marriages okay. that are recognized by the law in Kenya uh, as follows. Uh, civil marriages, which are celebrated before the marriage registrar, mm -hmm. and which are monogamous, one man, one woman, to the exclusion of all others. Mm -hmm. Then we have Christian marriages, which are celebrated before a church minister, and they are also monogamous, <coughs> one man, uh, one woman, to the exclusion of all others. Mm. Then we have Hindu marriages, mm. celebrated in, a con in accordance with um, Hindu customs and rites, again also monogamous. Then we have Islamic marriages, which are celebrated in accordance with the uh, Islamic law, and which are potentially polygamous. And then we have customary unions or marriages which are celebrated in accordance with the customs of the people and which are also potentially polygamous. Okay. And then we have one type of marriage is not recognized in the Marriage Act, mm -hmm. but is nonetheless recognized by um, judges and by the courts as a, a way of getting married, which is kamuiste oh. or cohabitation, as mm -hmm. uh, we call them. And uh, the court may, in proper circumstances, presume a marriage in respect <coughs> of a situation where there is no formal marriage mm -hmm. but that but where parties have lived as husband and wife. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Could you please elaborate on uh, this come with stay unions? Happily. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the questions about come with stay unions yeah. never end. Mm. So the courts have recognized mm -hmm. that a couple who do not go through any formal ceremony may nonetheless be considered as husband and wife in certain situations. The Supreme Court, in a judgment that was delivered this year, and you know the Supreme Court is the highest of the courts in our land, mm -hmm. so when they declare the law, it becomes the law, mm -hmm. stated that yes, uh, marriage can come into, big, into being by way of uh, people living together, provided mm -hmm. that the following um, uh, parameters are met. The first one, is that you must have the capacity to marry. Like you cannot be married uh, to another person mm -hmm. in a monogamous union and then get into a Kamui stay. You can't, you do not have capacity. Mm -hmm. You also have to be, of course, of adult age and you have to be of sound mind. Mm -hmm. That speaks to capacity. The next one is consent. Mm -hmm. You must agree, yeah. you know, to get married. Okay, you can't be forced. Mm -hmm. But I must tell you this. <laughs> Many uh, gentlemen have told me in a uh, light discussion that, you know, when they got into customer, into these come with stay unions, mm -hmm. uh, they didn't know. They didn't quite know they were married <laughs> until the wife said they were married. So <laughs> it's an interesting discussion. So indeed, uh, you need to consent. Yes. And then um, the other thing you need to do is you need to hold yourselves out to the general public yeah. as being married. Yeah. You can't call each other girlfriend and boyfriend <laughs> one day and then the next time you want the court to presume mm. that it's a marriage. Yeah. And then the other one is that you have to have lived together mm. for a long period of time. Yeah. Now a long period of time is not defined. It is left to the discretion of the court as in a particular magistrate or judge sitting will determine is this a long enough period of time yeah. to presume um, a marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, the Supreme Court said, however, that uh, the presumption of marriage, which is what the court does in cohabitation situation, is a dying doctrine. They don't see much future in it. It is oh. good to have that in your mind. Why are they not going to recognize it anymore? What's So they will continue recognizing okay. as at the moment, okay. but they were, I think, warning the society mm -hmm. that it's, it's, it's not going to be like forever. Okay. okay, so we don't know how long that will be, okay. but uh, thinking through that judgment, why would the court say that? Because, um, see, the time has come 
for people to be intentional about mm -hmm. what they intend mm -hmm. okay so that if they intend to get married mm -hmm. then they ought to get married and have a certificate for it because it becomes so much easier sure. in the come with the situations it's actually a very difficult thing to do because many of the times actually almost all the times mm -hmm. when a court is asked to presume marriage is there is conflict mm -hmm. in that union mm -hmm. and one person is pulling in one direction mm -hmm. against it mm -hmm. and the other person is trying very hard to prove that indeed there was a marriage oh for me i, I think that uh, the supreme court's attitude is based on the fact that the law has facilitated uh, marriages mm -hmm. you know like there are five ways in which you could get married yes. there is you can go to church you can go to the marriage registrar you can go to you can do a hindu ceremony you can do an islamic one you can do a customary one mm -hmm. why don't you just do one of those and um, get a certificate, certificate of yeah. exactly rather than have you to have to queue up the people to whom you have held yourself out to be see. you see yes well, you spoke about uh, some marriages being potentially polygamous yes so in this come we stay union mm -hmm. yes are they potentially polygamous um they could be mm -hmm. you see they are not quite regulated yeah. by any law other than uh, the the case law you know out there like from the court so they could be yeah. potentially polygamous okay yes. since the courts have given us five ways mm -hmm. to get married and get a certificate mm -hmm. why do you think that um a lot of people are still involved in the Kamu stay unionship okay okay that's a very good question mm -hmm. and uh, one of them could well be that people slide into a situation mm -hmm. without intending you know they start mm -hmm. out as girlfriend and boyfriend and then they get comfortable but perhaps they even have children they acquire property mm -hmm. they live every way mm -hmm. as a married couple maybe even more mm -hmm. than the ones married with a certificate mm -hmm. and they never quite think about formalizing it see. you see so that could be one of them but the other one also could be the societal pressure mm -hmm. on uh, formalizing unions not mm -hmm. so much the legal pressure mm -hmm. because we have said that there are several ways in which you can do but the societal pressure because what happens when a young man declares that he wants to get married to his family Bring what does the, the family think about yeah mm -hmm. they start thinking about uh, how do we mobilize are we ready yeah. you know financially mm -hmm. what happens when a girl declares to her family that i'm bringing a young man home i want to get married to him mm -hmm. many of our families begin to think so how are they coming you know that kind of thing mm -hmm. so we've seen uh, many things that shouldn't have to happen you know uh, friends cars parked a mile away you know <laughs> in outside mm -hmm. the girl's home mm -hmm. and uh, that village mm -hmm. or that town we'll talk about that you know forever but what does it do it pressures young men and young women who cannot be able to summon mm -hmm. those kind of uh, uh, what are they called black suits or whatever they are yes. you know four wheel drives you yes. know it puts pressure on them mm -hmm. it's put pressure on other families that are expected to go and declare that uh, their son wants to marry a certain person so i want to say the following Mm -hmm. that we need to be intentional as our society let us help our young people if they have intention if they have capacity mm -hmm. if they have willingness mm -hmm. ask of ask no more of them mm -hmm. have a simple lunch at home mm -hmm. bless them mm -hmm. let them go to the registrar uh, registrar of marriages and or, or, or to, to the religious leader for that matter or mm -hmm. to the priest you know mm -hmm. or to whoever it is that they, they want to go to let them formalize their union mm -hmm. these things don't matter yeah. it doesn't matter the number of cows the number of black uh, four wheel drives or whatever it yes. is let's look into what is marriage about yes, mm -hmm. yes. so i think that would have less young people living together without any formality if the society exerted less pressure, pressure on them but uh, i also think that pressure begins from the person mm -hmm. you see sure. so i want to talk to young people and tell them in the same way you are able to tell us my job my dress code my hairstyle mm -hmm. you know my everything mm -hmm. okay my life it is the same way that if you intend to marry you should just tell us it's my marriage this is what i can afford or cannot afford yes. let me be I think it's time for us to hear the young men and the young women on what they intend to do 
and see them do it. Absolutely. Yeah. And I agree with that because mm -hmm. if you think about it, it's because you saw your neighbor yes. do a really huge wedding, for example. Yes. And so somewhere in there, there is a competition of some sort. And so there is the pressure on you. Yes. But at the same time, you yeah. are the one asserting that pressure on yourself to a certain degree. Indeed. Y yes, there's the expectation from the society, but yes. also yourself. Yes. You have this pressure. Oh, he did this. Yes. He's no, absolutely, mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, and and that's challenging uh, to me and to yourselves. It should be mm -hmm. as uh, mentors. When we are talking to our mentees, mm -hmm. we need to be also intentional about uh, what uh, we tell them and how we mentor them. Mm -hmm. I think we need to debunk this myth like everything about us was always big, you know, mm, yeah. you know, everything was always big, mm -hmm. you know, our weddings, our childbirth, you know, all those things, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we, we, we just need to take them to what in the end is important. Yeah. Yeah. Because what is the, in the end that is important is not the wedding day. Exactly. Absolutely not. That's only one it's day. Exactly. The marriage is Indeed. a whole lot longer. Indeed. It's, it's meant to last forever. Absolutely. So that's, uh, if anything, mm. if we're talking about spending, for example, yeah, yeah. instead of spending that million on the wedding, yes. go buy a little chamber, invest in something. You Absolutely. Know, just, just an idea. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, our times were different. I mm. got married in 1994. Uh -huh. Us used to hold pre-weddings. You know, we went Ooh. for each other's pre-weddings. Uh -huh. We put together funds, you know. Uh -huh. The wedding was by the community uh -huh. of your friends. Yeah. It's a different time now. Mm -hmm. So people need to devise another way yes. of doing things. Yes. Don't put people to pressure and don't put yourself to pressure. Of course, it's easier said than done. Sure. But I do hope that in, 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 in time, mm -hmm. in the time to come, people will be able to take charge of that space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've spoken about the different kinds of marriages. Yeah. Could you please elaborate more on the customary marriages? Okay, so customary marriages mm -hmm. are just what they are. Uh, customary marriages mm -hmm. and uh, every community in Kenya has a form of a customary marriage mm -hmm. and the law is saying we will recognize your marriage so long as it is done in accordance with the customs of the people mm -hmm. that where you come from yeah. for example so for example among the Kikuyu it you need to be certified by elders that the processes that are supposed to take place, do take place. Like mm -hmm. there is Rurashio, there is, um, there is the next uh, step, which is Gorario, very critical mm -hmm. among the Kikuyu. Mm -hmm. And then on the basis of that, the Registrar of Marriages will give you a certificate. Mm -hmm. But allow me to take you a little um, way back. Before the Marriage Act of 2014, our customary marriages were not recognized mm -hmm. in any statute. Mm -hmm. Very sad. But what used to happen is that they were still there and the courts would recognize them. But there was no provision in any statute. There was no way you could read in any act of parliament that customary marriages are recognized. So in 2014, we, they were codified. So they are part of the uh, Marriage Act. And some people then, and, and I think to today they still ask, that you people made polygamy um, accepted mm -hmm. in the law. Okay, mm -hmm. as part of the law. And uh, I'd like to say this, and I've said it again and again, that customary marriages were always there, side by side with the ones that were provided for by statute or acts of parliament. Mm -hmm. However, they needed the court to presume them or to make a determination that they existed. And there were no certificates. Mm -hmm. So you needed to queue up the elders that came for your Kurashia, mm -hmm. for your Guradio, to confirm that indeed you were married, that is where there was a dispute. But with the law now, you can have a certificate of marriage even though married under a customary union. So that's very important. But they are potentially polygamous. The law recognizes that mm -hmm. a man can marry uh, another wife and another wife and another wife, and the law will recognize that. But uh, for the sake of those who get confused about whether the Marriage Act allows polygamy, I'd like to say the following, that if you choose to get married in church, if you choose to get married before the Register of Marriages, if you choose to get married um, in the Hindu way of marriages, that marriage is not, and I repeat, not potentially polygamous. Mm -hmm. But if you choose 
to go customary law, if you choose to go Islamic way, then absolutely it is potentially polygamous. Uh -huh. So Judy, in customary marriages, yeah. um, we have dowry. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, what is the, what's the legal position on dowry? So that's been a controversial subject, mm -hmm. but the law says that in customs where dowry payment is required, mm -hmm. a token of the same will do for purposes of fulfilling the legal requirement. Okay. In short, mm -hmm. the elders need not be too worried that dowry must be paid, like if it was 100,000 or 100 goats or 100 cows, mm -hmm. for purposes of meeting the legal threshold, mm -hmm. a token is sufficient. It's not defined, mm -hmm. but it's just what it says, a token. Mm. So people talk about uh, arranged marriages. Yeah. So what are they and what category do they fall in? An interesting question. Mm. So the arranged mm. is not the marriage. Mm -hmm. It is the process of getting the couple together before marriage, you see. Mm -hmm. So you can meet. You can meet in many ways. Mm. You can meet at your place of work. You can meet in a pub. I hear many people nowadays meet in pubs. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can meet in church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can meet in a bus. Mm -hmm. You can meet anywhere. But you can also meet through an arranged marriage. Mm -hmm. And that means that uh, the people around you, your family, are intentional about putting you together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's a way of meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. That does not amount to a marriage per se. It is a ceremony mm -hmm. that you undergo after that yeah. that becomes a marriage. Uh -huh. Yes.